Uh, well, it's great to be back here and it's great to uh, do the uh, final learn to talk with you all. Uh, and it was great just coming out of the job alike session where we were talking a lot about what I'm going to kind of talk about here uh, to wrap us up. But the, the moment that we're living in is, is quite interesting. And I think especially for, you know, even conferences like, like learning too, on um, what does the future look like? And really, I think if you can boil it down, you can boil it down to what, what is really happening right now. And the changes that we're going through is we're, we're having to redefine what it means to be knowledgeable. And, and to me, that's really what, what this is about. And the, the biggest thing that we need to start with and we need to understand, and I think uh, us as a group of educators who, who have been on, on the leading edge for a long time is understanding that for a long time, like since the beginning of education, our, our idea of literacy has been built on this pyramid, right? Like we were, we were a print-based literacy system. Education was, it just, it was what it, what it was. And over the years, we've added this thing called digital literacy to it. And then we even added this thing called network literacy. Like how do you learn on the internet, right? Like we, we have the internet in every school, every one of your schools has the internet and still the literacies of how to learn that way were just added onto the other literacies that we had. And the, the problem that happened, the problem that happened during this pandemic was in a moment's notice. And for me, it was March 17th. And for you, you can probably remember the day as well. But in, in a moment, we flipped that pyramid on its head. In a moment, we all of a sudden needed every single educator, every single student, every single employee needed to have network literacy skills. They needed to understand how do you learn, work, and play on the network and print literacy really faded to the background. And, and it's not that print literacy isn't important. I want students reading books. I want students uh, you know, interacting with paper and smelling the paper of books. I want that. But we also have to understand and we have to recognize this pyramid is not going back. We are not going back to a print-based world. There's no reason to go back to a print-based world. And when you think about it, during the pandemic, all the tools that we use to educate kids, none of it was created because of the pandemic. Everything we used, whether it was Seesaw or Canvas or Zoom or Google Meets or whatever you used, it was all sitting there waiting to be used. We just weren't paying attention. Some of us were pushing it. We've been pushing it for a long time. But all of a sudden, the world had to wake up and we're not going back. And I think that is where we're headed and, and kind of what the pushback is we're seeing now. The other part of this is just where we are globally. And globally, what has happened is this has propelled us into what is known as the fourth industrial revolution, right? That we're past, we're past the idea of the age of the internet and we're into a digital, we're into a digital automated complex tasks of what we're trying to accomplish. But if we actually look at this and understand this idea of the fourth, uh, the fourth industrial revolution, it's not about the computers. It's the, the part that I've circled there at the bottom. It's what it's doing for people, right? It's this idea of empowering people. That's what we are doing right now. That is, that is where we are. And if you just look, and, and I'm over in the chat, I'm sure you can share even more. But if you just think about what are technologies that have empowered people, if you have a car, you can make money. If you have a house, you can put it on Airbnb. There's YouTube where you can make money or Facebook Marketplace or Etsy or Lyft or Craigslist. All of a sudden, we have technology that empowers people to do something different. And it's changing globally what it means to be in an economy. And so what we are looking at is this comes directly from the UN is we are focused and we are moving into this idea of a knowledge economy, right? An economy in which the growth is dependent on the quantity, quality, and accessibility of the information, not your means of production. The, the best thing we can do for our people is to get them connected, to get students able to, to, to learn online and know how do you access information. That's been the big switch. And it's, it's a switch that we're not going back because our entire global economy is being completely changed because of this. Now, when we talk about schools, what does that mean? And what it means for me specifically is looking at and trying to help schools foster this idea of we are having to move from a just-in-case model of education to a just-in-time model of education. The idea being that these schools, every school was found the foundation of education was that we had to teach you stuff just in case you need to use it someday, kiddos. 
here, here, you have to learn all this stuff because someday you might need to use it. The problem is we live in a world where that doesn't happen. We live in a world where you learn things the moment you need to know it. And nothing showed that more than the last year and a half of learning where we learned to teach online the moment we needed to. Kids learned to learn online the moment they needed to. We live in a world where learning happens in the moment. Our classrooms need to be a place where we teach kids a skill and they use that skill at the same time. One of the issues we're seeing in schools right now is kids not doing work or not being engaged because we teach them something on Monday to be test on Friday. And you have a brain of a child that's saying, why am I gonna do that? I'll learn it Thursday night. Because they can. They live in a world of YouTube where you learn things the moment you want to know it. And so this is it, right? This is where we're at. When we're redefining what it means to be knowledgeable, every school is going through a redefinition phase. Knowledge is no longer defined by knowing something. It's defined by one's ability to learn, unlearn, and relearn in the moment knowledge is needed. What if our schools focused on not allowing kids to know stuff, but instead the ability to learn, unlearn, and relearn the moment they needed to? In fact, in 2020, a book came out called The Half-Life of Facts. And in the book here, Samuel talks about just how fast information is moving today, right? That health and medical publications, aka science, is two to three years. Physics, math, and humanities, your publications, the half-life of the information in there, at most is four years. If you were using a textbook that's more than four years old, you'd be better using the internet. Are we asking kids to look at the information that is in their textbook the same way we're asking them to look at information that they find on the internet? It's not, a, it's not the same world that we live in. It wasn't, but it's there, right? And, and Samuel talks about this. The faster the pace of knowledge change, the more valuable the skill of learning becomes. And we've known that in education. We call it lifelong learning. We've been on, we've been striving for that for a really long time. And so when we think about this, we have to understand that education right now is going through a lot of turmoil. And one of those things that we're doing is that we are trying to figure out, right? We have to adopt a framework that focuses on providing students with the skills to learn, unlearn, and relearn, and less on the actual content used to teach those skills. If I'm a math teacher, my question should be, how am I teaching kids to think like a mathematician? Not the actual math concept. I've got spreadsheets that do that for me. I don't need to spend time having kids color in charts because no mathematician colors in charts. Technology will do that part for you. But how do you think like a mathematician? How do you think like a scientist? How do you think like an author or think like a writer? That's our skill. What, what are the skills that are needed inside your content area? What does that look like? And the main word there, the word I wanna focus in on is the word unlearn because that's the hardest part. Learning is innate to us as humans. Right, relearning something we do all the time. We relearn to set our clocks every time <laughs> that the time goes back, right? But that unlearn part, to me, that's the key. And it's the hardest part of it. And when you think about what does it mean to unlearn, right? Are, are we helping kids understand? Do we, are we giving kids, when we talk about unlearn, are we helping them understand that there's a willingness to accept new information? Just the idea that there's new information that might be available today that wasn't available tomorrow. Are we helping kids to understand and accept that what worked yesterday might not work today? And are we willing to accept what was true yesterday might not be true today? Because information is moving at the speed of a click. And I think about teachers. What is it that we have to unlearn as, as educators moving forward? Do we have to unlearn pedagogical approaches that no longer work? For example, curriculum maps and pacing guides. Do we have to unlearn systems and strategies that fostered inequity that we knew and then all of a sudden were thrown in our face when we had to make a switch? Do we need to move away from teaching content and towards teaching skills? What is it that we need to unlearn as we come out of this? And as I wrap this up, I want to I want to talk about like, well, what would this look like? And I think I can wrap this up with one place that we could teach all of these skills. And that one place is Wikipedia. It's freely available. It's all over the world. It allows you to 
go in and do all types of learning. And in fact, you just have to ask kids a couple different questions. Let's take kids to Wikipedia and ask students, hey, on your Wikipedia page, what is true and how do you know it's true? What information might need to be updated? Or how might you contribute to a global knowledge base? What if we just use Wikipedia to help teach students? Or what if we just changed our entire classrooms to mean a skills-focused framework for education? What if we started asking students, no matter your content area, how do I know what is factual right now? Do I understand what is fact today might not be a fact tomorrow or needs to be updated? And do I have the skills to learn the moment knowledge is needed? Do I have the skills to learn the moment knowledge is needed? That is what our classrooms and our schools should focus on. And so as we end learning to virtual, I want us to be thinking about as we leave this conference, what will you unlearn? What, is, what unlearning do we need to do in our schools, within ourselves, within our communities, as we think about a future that is based on skills, not content? Thanks.